Honorable Additional Secretary of uh, the DOT, Mr. Shiv Asylum, sir. Your Excellency, uh, Mr. Tomas, who is uh, Kozlowski, the uh, Ambassador, EU. Mr. Pathak, who is uh, organizing this for all your hard work. Thank you. And for all of the dignitaries on the stage, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for this opportunity to address you on a very important subject called machine to machine IoT. Uh, last week, as many of you may know, GSMA held its annual conference in Barcelona, Spain, and the whole headline was on IoT machine to machine 5G. And that was the headline. And there were some very provocative statements. The first uh, most interesting statement was that 5G was going to be a reality by the year 2018. That's in a year and a half or so, we should begin to start seeing real life rollouts of 5G networks and the overriding applications that will run on these types of services. So that is what was announced there. But in addition to that, the CEO of SoftBank made some startling comments. And one of those comments was that he had raised a hundred billion dollars to invest in IoT machine artificial intelligence because he saw this as the future of where machine to machine and IoT was going. Now, to contextualize $100 billion, if you take all of the private equity funding that is available globally, it's about 60 billion US dollars. This one gentleman who is the CEO of SoftBank has personally raised $100 billion to invest in startups in this emerging field. So it gives you uh, some sense of the complexity and some sense of the scope and scale of what is there. So having said that this is the reality that's not just in the future, but very much here and now vis-a-vis -vis 5G, which is going to support IoT and machine to machine, we must ask from a operator perspective, what are we seeing as the particularities of 5G? So there are three things that emerge as a result of why we must see 5G as the handmaiden, if you will, of the success factor of machine to machine, IoT and cloud computing. One obviously is the increased speeds. We're talking about one gigabit type speeds now. Secondly is the low latency that is to be required for these types of applications and three is the capacity considering the width of the pipe as faster and faster speeds uh, become mandatory and are required. So when you look at those three components, one of the factors that emerged in the World Congress was the significant amount of investments that are going to be required in the underlying network infrastructure. And the clear requirement that network operators are increasingly under financial pressure to get the investments and the resources to provide the quality and the scope and scale of the networks that are going to support all of these applications and things that are the hallmark of IoT and machine to machine. Now, this raised this whole matter, and uh, Mr. Sunil Bharti Mittal, who happens to be the chairman of GSMA, the first time that an Asian has been elevated to that post, highlighted that if we are going to continue to allow these networks to develop, then we have to continuously aggregate these networks into common ownership. So when we look at consolidation in our own industry here in India, it is not an isolated event, it is a global event. And so as a result of this, this ability to raise resources, invest them, maintain and roll out these massive network capacities with the type of speeds and the type of reach was going to require a phenomenal amount of investment. And so therefore, I think the debate that is going on in our country is not an isolated debate. It is a global debate which talks about how are we going to sustain the underlying networks to be able to keep up 
with a scope, scale, and quality that is required to deliver the type of services that we are talking about. And so that's the first point that I would like to leave with you as you continue our deliberation. How do we maintain the investments, the financial health of the underlying networks that is the sine qua non in terms of being able to carry this forward in terms of scope, scale, investment, and quality that is required? The second point that is going to be raised and that comes out of the deliberations of Mobile Congress is the emergence of artificial intelligence as the outcome of what we are talking about here in machine to machine and IoT. Every country needs to prioritize what it wants to do in any emerging technology or in any emerging field. And if you look at the history of most countries, you will notice that that is precisely what happened. Uh, part of the technological progress of the United States was based in part on the fact that President Kennedy at one point said, we're going to reach the moon. And set in place, all of the investments from the universities and the institutions and the government that focused the energies of the state in terms of a singular priority which had cascading impacts. And so too, when you go from country to country, you will notice there was a prioritization. Look at GSMA. Why did the European Union and the companies affiliated with these countries do so well in terms of the expansion of equipment manufacturing? It was because these countries gathered together to adopt a common standard which became the global norm, and these countries benefited out of that. And so too, you can look at Japan in terms of the prioritization of manufacturing, you can look at Taiwan in terms of chip manufacturing, and so on and so forth. I think it goes without saying. So the question that we have to ask, what is India going to prioritize if we are going to take our rightful place in this emerging field? And I would like to put in front of you this notion that we must prioritize the development and the sustainability and the pioneering efforts around artificial intelligence that our IP focus, that the generation of our standards, and the place that we must take must focus on the development of artificial intelligence, which we believe is going to be the core that will emerge as the single most important aspect of IT, IoT, machine to machine. Now, let me get back to why I say this. And again, it's not a unique thought with me. The gentleman that I talked to, the CEO of SoftBank, made this other startling fact. He said, today, if you look at an average room, the IQ level is about 100. If you take the situation of an Einstein or a Isaac Newton, you'd probably double that to about 200. All right, That's the IQ level of a certified genius. On average, 100. He was talking about the year 2030 when he believes and he's made his investments in the enabling technologies. He believes that machine IQ, machine IQ will accelerate to 10,000. This is a man who's put his money where his mouth is. All right, now please think about the implications of what we're talking about. He said, he says, in the span of some 10 years, he will have a chip, and he's got a company that he's just invested 36 billion US dollars in, that will develop a chip that has just about that type of computing power that he says will be installed in the heel of your shoe that will begin to start monitoring things. So the point that we're asking is that if you're going to look at this factor of going from 100 IQ to 10,000 IQ simply because of machine intelligence, this is where IoT, machine to machine, and all of this going. We have to ask ourselves, what are we going to prioritize? And I submit to you again that this is what we must begin to put as a national priority in terms of all of the sustaining elements, be it manufacturing, be it uh, chip acquisition, chip design, uh, IP rights, uh, standards, and all of this that must be essential. The second point, the first point, <laughs> you must maintain the financial health of the underlying networks, otherwise M2M and IoT and all of this is not going to deliver the types of requirements that are there. Second thing is saying is that all countries must prioritize, and I'm submitting to you that India must 
prioritize in terms of artificial intelligence. We have the wherewithal and the know-how, and I think we need to prioritize. The third thing that I said is that we must begin to start thinking of alternatives to the internet. Now, this might sound like a strange point. I think we are rapidly coming to the point that we cannot hobble the internet with commercial applications per se. Now, if you look at the whole issue of net neutrality, it's because we've muddied the waters in terms of what is going on in the internet. Now, people have talked about the internet as this great thing, and precisely so it is. But I think we're coming to the point where already the internet is bifurcated. You have the dark net, right, for all kinds of stuff. You have the internet, and I'm suggesting to you that going forward, we will need to begin to start developing an internet which is commercially oriented because otherwise it's not going to be sustainable in terms of the load factors. And so the standards that are required, the interfaces, the language requirements, all of these things that are going to emerge are going to have to be separated from purely what we expect today in terms of the internet because my proposition to you is that the internet going forward cannot sustain the types of commercial applications that are going to start emerging in terms of the fields that are emerging. So I think we should begin to start expecting to see perhaps, and already there is talk and think about it today, right? Something that's on the internet, it's a commercial application. Bitcoins is more valuable than gold, precisely because of what is happening on commercial activity on the internet. Alternative forms of currency, all of this is going to take place. Third point is that we must get ready, perhaps, to develop and to see emerging a new form of the internet, which we would probably call the commercial net. Two elements that will come out of it, and I'll close with this. We must begin to start addressing the issue of security. Increasingly, as a result of what is emergency emerging, we are finding that both at the national level, at the sovereign level, and at the privacy level, and at both at the commercial and at the consumer level, consumers are increasingly becoming concerned about the amount of information that is available in the public domain. Part of it, our own problem, because we just tick the box called I agree, and we voluntarily put up on the net things that are, should be of an extremely private network. And so what is emerging in the internet or in the commercial internet is that you as a person are going to be the single most valuable product on the net, be it on the internet or the commercial net. It's not things, it's you. Because ultimately, you will be the ultimate focus of what is going on. And finally, when I talk about uh, privacy, we must begin our, our, our security. Governments and uh, institutions and industries must begin to start investing in terms of what it means to have robust security in terms of the applications, the sensors, everything else that is going on. And finally, as I said, let me conclude with saying in terms of not only the security, but privacy. People are increasingly concerned about the level of information that is readily available and what people do, both commercially and private, uh, means in terms of the vast amount of private information that goes on. And so, as governments and as companies, we need to begin to start asking ourselves, what are the self-regulating types of policies that we must adopt as companies? Increasingly, I get asked, who is responsible? And I convincingly say, or try convincingly to say that you must ultimately be the gatekeeper of your own privacy. You disclose far too much. And so we must begin, and as companies, we need to begin to tell you what we begin to start doing with the vast amounts of data that becomes part and parcel of our ecosystem. So I think these are some of the things that we must begin to start looking at, focusing on. And let me close with summarizing again the fact that IoT and machine to machine is a reality, all right? That this is already here, that 5G is here. And as a result, because of the vast amounts of investments that we will be required to make, the underlying networks which sustain this must be looked at in terms of financial viability and health and sustainability going forward. The second thing that I uh, talked about is the fact that all countries must prioritize, and I submit that we should begin to start prioritizing not just IT, IoT and machine, machine stuff, but artificial intelligence. There are implications of that, of course. If robotics, which is the active part of uh, artificial intelligence, is going to emerge, and we're going to have to ask ourselves, what do we do with skilling? It's an, uh, an ancillary fact. The third point that we said is that we must begin to start addressing issues of security, both national and private. Fourth, I said we must talk about privacy 
that is going to be part and parcel because both businesses and consumers are going to be focusing in increasingly on this. And finally, as I said, we ought to keep our ears and eyes open for the emergence of a new net called the commercial net. Thank you very much.